morning. Happy Tuesday morning. How's everybody? Oh, my goodness. It's mornings are the morning streams are hard. And one of the things that's going on here, I have a new camera, not this one, the one that's on the work. And I think I have myself too close to my computer desk. I feel like I'm right on top of the camera here. I will be fine when I work. So anyway, now that I think about it, is this camera on? It was working. That's interesting. I have a little light showing it's on. It must come on when I, because it's connected with this, it must must come on automatically. It has a little switch at the top. This is a first for me. Um, it ends up it's not a zoom camera. Um, I had the option of buying one for twice the price and I chose to buy the one that was not zoom that is basically about like the camera that you're looking at me with right now. That's because I started using both of these cameras at the same time. The one that is on the handwork um, was flickering, fading. I was concerned it was going to go out. And I kind of figured they have about the same shelf life. So, uh, use life. I have a feeling that maybe this camera is going to go out. So I bought one that I know I like for the face. And then... The next time I have to buy one, I'm going to splurge and buy the Zoom one for my work table. It's a plan. I know. It's a budget plan. <laughs> it's not. Cameras, these cameras are not bad. They don't break the bank. I just, being thrifty, you know, just being thrifty. I have a fun project going on that I'm going to share with you today. I uh, like fingerless mitts and... I inherited a pair of them from my mother-in-law when she passed away and we cleaned out her closet. Good morning. You're lurking while you're waiting to head up to see your mom. She just had her knee surgery. Oh, good luck to her. Yes, good luck to her. Really, you know, I can't say everybody's experience is fine. Uh, the hardest part is is waiting to do things right you just you feel good you just you want to go after that knee gets through about three weeks of therapy and the surgery's healed and the hardest thing is yeah let's go <laughs> everything went well it's coming to, uh, someone's coming to get you shortly that's fine Kate I don't I don't mind you lurking I appreciate you telling me and I wish your mother well um, and I hope that as her helper, which I think probably you're going to be, um, you also don't have a lot of interruption to your life. Um, my daughter was fantastic. She took me to therapy, you know, uh, because I couldn't drive. When I had my left one done, I could drive myself, but when I had my right one done, she had to drive me and she took me. So it was a blessing to have her there. Okay, what I'm doing, I was saying that I inherited these fingerless mitts, and they're commercially made. Okay, they were commercially made, and I inherited these fingerless mitts from my mother-in-law when we cleaned out her her clothing from when she uh, passed away. Well, they are white. <laughs> they are not, they have fur on them. I didn't want to wash them, throw them in the washer, and on the other hand, this is, they're white and they're so dirty that I didn't think just hand washing was going to help. And they're not quite long enough. I would like them longer. So the bottom line is I decided to take the fur off <coughs> of, this is the second one, and copy them with hand spun and put the fur on. So that's the project I have just started. I have maybe eight rows going there's cabling on it as you could see on the uh, upper part you know that shows on this part and then where your thumb is is just my knitting so I have 
this hand spun yarn. I have it attached here. Nice bulky yarn, gonna knit up quick. You notice the the uh, prototypes are not really super thin yarn, so it's gonna knit up pretty good. And believe it or not, this is gonna be changing colors, right? Because it was, and you know what? I've I've lost track of what this actually was, um, but it was a uh, small. roving top or whatever that was changing colors as it went, away, or as, as it, uh, went on. So wound into that ball is a whole series of colors. So they are going to be very interesting and very colorful. And I doubt it will use up the whole ball. I don't know what I'm going to have left, but I probably can combine it with another skinny yarn. So let's get knitting. All right, this is my new camera. Look at that nice sharp image. I'm very, very happy with it. It was easy to install relatively. Took me a little bit, but you know, that's that's how it goes. And this is the original. This is the one that I'm using as my pattern and keeping track of with my cable. As you can see, I knit three, I, I do three rows and then I cable. And so I am at this point right here, and I'm using this as my marker in my pattern. Every time I cable, I just move it up. I really don't, will have to decide probably during stream whether I want to do it. Um, I'm actually coming from this direction. Let me go this way. I am actually coming from this direction. So I have done two. Now I'm going to do three and then cable. And it's... Um, you know, put two in front um, for this cross right here. I'm trying to be very consistent on that cross too. So at this point, I have to decide, do I do another cable and make them real long? You know, I'm not real sure. Or do I just not cable? We'll see. Or do I cable and then go to the cast off? <laughs> ah, decisions. <clears throat> Now, the only thing I don't like is this ball is going to roll around. All right, so I also have to watch when I, oh, when I didn't bring a stitch holder. Uh-oh, didn't think about that. I didn't have it with me. I have to put my thumb on something. I may have to get up and go get it. We'll see. <clears throat> that is, yeah, that's in the next, after the next cross. Okay. We'll deal with that when we come to it. Now, is my new name that it is? I'm going to do that a little bit. Because I don't like knitting on the ta over the table. I clunk the needles all the time. I haven't written this pattern down. I probably would be smart to do that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I should have a pearl in there somewhere. Hold on a minute, I may have dropped a stitch. Did I pearl at the end here? Oh, I did. Okay, so I am ready to hit these four nets. Okay. I 
go grab a stitch holder. I may grab the label for this. I really can't remember. So I have two needles, each with a cable and a pearl, and then the rest is a knit. And this, at the end of this, is where the glove, where the, uh, let's see, I have counted this once before. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I have six, uh, a, a circle of twelve for the, so I have to put, let's see, six on two rows. And do those in a circle? I'm not I'm not good at doing this stuff without a pattern. I may not do that right, I don't know. These are size tens. And as you can see, it's not a real bulky stitch. I think these are tens. I don't have a gauge thing here. God, I got everything else. I don't have a needle gauge. This is a good example of barber pole yarn uh, and how it knits up. You can see it's very tweedy, speckled looking. It doesn't really end up looking barber pole in the knitting, but uh, it has a distinctive look. It is incredibly common to make barber pole yarn when you're spinning uh, because you end up plying two contrasting strongly contrasting colors that's how you get that Well, I got to spend um, the couple hours with my knitting spinning friend. It was so nice. I went to her house and we just had a really nice visit. We didn't do anything. She got her nano out and spun it a little bit. In fact, I was looking at her nano. She's she and I are supposed to have the same ones. It's they're both purple too, um, and her motor is different than the one, motor I have in mine. I think I'm going to take my Nano with me next time. I want to compare it, but she's doing almost all her spinning um, on the Nano uh, upstairs. Downstairs in her great room, she has a great wheel <laughs> in her great room. And um, let's see, I need to 
So she has some just some white fleece fiber going on the great wheel, but I hate ending rows in pearl and every uh, rose, not rose, but needles in a pearl because when you pull it so you don't get a gap with the next needle the pearl stitches pull out weird cases I think I've let everybody know things are good I'm sure for somebody you're gonna get blamed on only having one cup of coffee there you go it's always good to have a reason that way <laughs> coffee is always a good reason for that <laughs> is what I'm trying to say yeah I know Well, I hope they. I I can't. I think I was only in a full. I mean, after my surgery, I wasn't in the hospital. I was overnight, but I went home the next day. They don't keep you very long. I hope she has time to be ready to go home. I realized that she just had her surgery. That won't be till tomorrow. All right, I should be ready for a cable row here now. Let's see. Yep. Speaking of coffee. Anyway, I think this is going to look really cool to put the fur on the <laughs> on that. Isn't it? I think it's going to really look cool. That I'm sure is rabbit fur. Um, it's um, it is real fur. Um, it has the look and, and uh, you know it it kind of has that look of cashmere because it's a right color. But I'm pretty sure it's a rabbit. It's very much a rabbit color too. But if I'm wrong, and they were a splurge gift uh, somebody gave her, I may have cashmere. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna. I gotta mark this. Hang on here. I need. I need better marker system here. Use a needle. Because I need the cable.
these are these double pointers are kind of because they're so big thick the size 10 they're they're kind of awkward i'm used to working with you know threes <laughs> for socks all right this is a cable I'm not sure these cables are right. I I gotta look at this again. It's hard to see the cabling because of the yarn. They're they're tighter. Okay, these look tighter I wonder if there it looks like there might have been a different another row four rows and then a cable yeah that's what it is I, I cabled a row too soon so it's four rows in a cable I'm gonna write that down Patterning on the fly. <laughs> Making up the pattern as you go. A lot of people do that. This is a lot of fun uncabling. Ooh, my friend is, she's all into Gansey sweaters, knitting them. And she bought traditional, true Gansey yarn in the most gorgeous pine green. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. That's what she's going to make her sweater out of. But she's been following somebody on uh, the internet. I think it's Instagram. Well, I'm not real sure. But they, they have been you know developing Gansey patterns <clears throat> um, that were supposedly very very traditional and there is a book uh, by I think Beth Renzel Renzel or something like that that is also all about Gansey patterns in fact I have it and she has the book it reminded me okay let's see here I can just 
go forward here now. It reminded me years ago, um, there was a lady, Janet Scasbo, um, it's like S-Z-A-B-O or something like that, wrote a book about um, Aaron. And Aaron and Gansey, I'm sure, are different. I mean, the whole point of the patterning of sweaters that they wore when they went fishing, the whole point was to uh, develop a pattern specific for your area. And this is a, a piece of history that probably you know, but it's just, it fascinates me every time. So each community, fishing community, would have specific pattern that they would put on their sweaters. And the reason, if there was a shipwreck and the body came up and they couldn't tell, the sweater probably would be all right and they could tell by the sweater. And the reason the sweater would probably be all right was because they were knitting them in the grease to keep the, you know, they, they would, of course, saturate eventually, but they were extremely protected from water because they were leaving the grease in there for that reason, so that when they were on the boat and it was raining, you know, they didn't have to have, they, that water would not soak in as quick, right? Which, of course, kept them warmer, a lot warmer. Such a neat piece of history and a little morbid too, unfortunately, but, um, yeah, that, so, you know, Aaron and Gainsey patterns are very traditional specific to a lot of areas, and a lot of people have made a point to try and, uh, capture that history and recreate it. Oh, I do have to go all the way back. My yarn's back here. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, maybe I have it backwards. I have it backwards. It's right here. Figure out, don't, boy, I can't put this knitting down. I forget where I'm at. All right, so now we're knitting. I'm all right. Just had to talk it out, out loud. So she's got me all enthused about knitting. And I have so many knitting projects that I haven't finished. I really, really... And Sock Madness is coming. I'm just like, la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm not listening. <laughs> uh. Uh-oh. Yep. Oh, I dropped a stitch. There it is. It's just sitting right there waiting for me. Bless its little heart. It didn't run. should be ready to cable now. I've done an extra row.
think I might end up with a oh shoot what do you call it where you're, you can see a line of open area because of the separation ladder a ladder in between these one needles set of needles because of the cabling it fell right there Alright, let's take a look at these cables now and see if they... Yes, I think they lay... Oh, yeah. Alright. So we have... And you know, this this has been... This is acrylic and it's been pressed, right? It killed... They killed it, so it lays flat. This has all this bulk to it. So it's harder to see the cabling, but and oh, actually, it's supposed to be on this one here. Where's the cables here? It goes right here like this. I'm gonna have way more cables than they did. <laughs> because they they blocked it so hard. See that? That's this is a tough call. I think I'm gonna make one complete extra cabling in there. That's five rows. Oh, it's a doubt. Done with the round. I gotta finish around here. <clears throat> Well, it feels good to knit. I did bring another project. I wasn't real sure. I'm, and I may not work on this the whole stream. Um, I am still having trouble with my left hand going to sleep when I knit. And it's tingling. I mean, it's doing it right now, but... I can continue to knit because it doesn't go completely numb, but it's not a good thing, I know. Oh, there's a big clump of white that shows that it's hand spun yarn, not commercial. <laughs> Where the yarn didn't, I mean the fiber didn't uh, spread out, draft out.
not gonna address that pearl again. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. It, it's making it drop off. At least it's not running. I guess it's on the end of the needle. I guess when I pull it, snug it up on the next needle, I'm pulling that pearl off. I don't intend to block these, which is another reason I need to add rows. Plus, I have the yarn. I have a lot of yarn. I might get a small uh, cowl. Uh, I don't think I'd get a hat out of this, unfortunately, unless I added a different color brim. It does always surprise me how much, I mean it looks like a small ball of yarn, but how much you can actually knit with it. I have a very distorted sense of how much yarn is needed for things, especially the smaller projects. One more row than a cable roll. I need coffee. It's just now getting to a good drinkable temperature. Handshake. I see blue coming up underneath all this purple. We're on dark purple. We had light purple on this. It's dark purple. Alright, one more row, then cable.
almost forgot. <laughs> put it, put it back, put it back. Alright, there we go. Get out of there. My <laughs> needle was in my sleeve. There we go. I don't know why I'm holding on to the cable needle. I should just let it go. It's making it awkward. Hey, try on time. You joke that you brought knitting for every mood, but what I didn't bring was knitting that I don't need a pattern for. Oh my gosh. You did bring patterns, right? Are you, are you going to be sitting without knitting? So that it's this here. Good job, good job. Runaway needle. Where'd it go? Okay. Always securely place your needle somewhere. Always place your needle somewhere secure. Okay. This is this way so kind of looks like I should go ahead and go get my stitch holder because the thumb placing is about right on this but what I need longer is the above the thumb so I am gonna put uh, be right back and go get the stitch holder. Okay, it says you brought all the patterns. I just forgot that I'd want one or two I didn't need to focus on or could just set down and easily get back up. Yeah, that you know what? Patternless knitting would be better, like a, a garter scarf or something like that in your situation. You got a lot to think about. You don't want to be trying to focus on anything too complicated. Good luck on that. All right, so we are we have now determined that the best thing that us knitters could, uh, fiber people could do for the world is to set up a knitting shop in a hospitals, right? Just a little KSOC thing, emergency knitting and patterns. <laughs> it's my idea, but you can have it. Go for it. I'll be back. I'll be back in a minute. 
let you where is it be right back there we go I am back. And Kay says, yes, that would be fantastic. It would. <laughs> All right. Now, I need to give me a minute here. I want to check something on Ravelry, see if I have this, uh, all of this hand spun. Oh, Google's little thing is so cute for Valentine's Day. I have to sign on to Ravelry? Why is that? Boy, I have a lot of Shetland. <laughs> wow. There it is. Aha! Aha! Mystery solved. Okay. Nope. That's part of it. Two skeins. Anyway, it is Dyed Targi and 
those are okay those are plane studies what did, I did the other one I applied what was left with there it is merino yeah one with a white merino and one with a black merino you guys want to see this hopefully you can go on Ravelry I'll, I'll uh, send this to you because this was really cool and on my project page it shows the braid and the, the fiber was targi deep dyed by deep dyed um, and it was something I bought and I am working on I am using the, the one that I did plied with white merino and then the exact same fiber is plied with black merino and it is an awesome yin yang study it really is cool so take a look at this if you can go to Ravelry I'll post this on um, Discord also because I realize there's not very many people here today. But um, hopefully that'll go through. Not too many. Let me see if that link works. No, link didn't work. Okay. I know what happened. I cut the O off of the, the very last one. There it is. Okay. There it is. Yay. And like I said, I'll put that. I, this was, you know, the reason I'm just so excited is if this was a fun thing to do and the putting them to side by side was just so awesome to see the difference. Now, you know, I'm just using it as yarn, but it was a fun project to do. Okay. Sometimes I wish we didn't have to ball up the yarn in order to work with it. You know, leave it in the skein. I know better than that. You're going to get a hopeless mess, but... The yarn always looks better in a skein than it does a ball.
I should make mitts out of both of them. I don't have the fur for the second one. Oops. There's no pearl here. No pearl here. Hi, all crafty. You're welcome to lurk and welcome. Don't let me distract you. But thank you for joining me. Working on fingerless mitts. Making it from a commercial one that I've been wearing forever and decided it's getting too tacky, tacky looking, right? So I'm making, making uh, some out of this hand spun. getting past time where to to wear fingerless mitts you know the reason these white ones are so well worn is because I wore them in the house and you know I, I'd have to take them off now and then to do stuff in the kitchen but our house was so drafty and cold during the winter just needed something on my hands I did find out though I can't knit with uh, fingerless mitts on. I really wish I could. But they're also wonderful for, of course, driving in the winter. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, I know a lot of people have said that. 
The problem is I talk <laughs> too. The spinning wheel has its own sound too. It's the same thing. Okay, so I totally forgot to do my thumb. Good grief. I'm supposed to do my thumb in here. Alright, I wonder if it's too late, too far. Let's see here. Yeah, it might be. I'm going to go ahead and do it though. Well, I could back up to, let's see here, the thumb is going right here, which is right where I'm at. Okay, I'm going to have to look up a pattern and see how to do a thumb. This is terrible, but I can't figure out I think it's okay, if I look at it here these stitches it's, all, it's done over two rows, isn't it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, and then get gets picked up. thumbs at all. Yeah, this is the kind of pattern I want right here. That's a pretty pattern. I'm going to have to make one like that. Anyway. Okay. 
Okay, the thumb is... Slip 13 stitches on the stitch holder, cast on one stitch close to the gap, knit one. So... It's interesting because it looks kind of... It's... stitches. That's the cast on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You know, I may have to sit and figure this out off stream. Sorry, guys. Because it seems like it is a right and left thing. I know I'm going to be doing this one. So. There's two stitches left. All right. Twelve is too many. Cause she cast on I'm doing this anyway, aren't I? <laughs> Can't help it. She cast on forty. I have thirty something. Thirty. Six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, I have 30 stitches. So ratio wise, if she did 12 to 40, I'm going to do 8 to 30, which is what I was visualizing anyway. The problem is 8 doesn't go into 30 uh, evenly. Ten seems like too many. So I may be taking this out, but I am going to try 8. Okay, 
Okay, so knit four and slip the rest. of these. Can I do them on two needles? Two, four, six, eight, eighteen, twenty-two. So eleven on a needle. So you cast on a stitch in order to bring this together. If I can do this. That didn't work at all. Come on. Let's just make a loop. Make a this kind. There we go. No. <laughs> I can't get a permanent loop. a cast on. It's not pulled real tight. Maybe if I go this way. Alright, so it's two and then pearl. And I have to decide, am I going to continue to cable? I think so.
My goodness, time flies when you're having fun. Oops. One of these. I got a ladder going in the middle of this from that needle stretch. Unfortunately, kind of take care of it here now. This was supposed to have been a knit. Okay, so this is going to be like this. We have, oh, a terrible stretch. Oh man, that's too bad. I'll work that in somehow. I thought I was pulling that tight, but I didn't. did, but it didn't hold. Looking forward to doing that thumb with these big needles. Let's see, there's some rows of ribbing. They show four rows of ribbing to end it, to kind of pull it in. It's already pretty pulled in, but that's a nice finish to it. To it. Okay. Too bad about that ladder. Yeah, I am going to do like two more cable rows, cables, and then the, still, it's going fast. It's going real fast. Take a little break here. I am eating a Struffwaffle. Waffle. Struffwaffle. Waffle. It's F. Struffwaffle.
Can I put this in let's see here? I really like this pattern. I'm gonna see if I can send it to on my desktop now. That's good. Also put it in the companion uh, when I get my pad. Can't do that here now, so it just happens to be on my desktop now. Can sort of see the color changes. See there. Purple to brown. And a blue's coming up next. I like, I like the way, I don't like the way um, yarn looks barber pulled like this. Right? I don't care for that. But when you knit it up, I just love it. The complexity. Right? The pops of color. And it's more obvious on this because of the white. Um, the black, I should have brought it in with me when I went out and got this, but the black is not as um, eye-popping. Alright. You know, back to that, uh, I'm going to go back a little bit. Uh, we, when I, right before I took break there, I was saying that, uh, talking to Kay about pattern and knitting in the hospital, and it ought to be a little case like, you know, most of the gift shops, in my experience, and I've worked in hospitals all my life, my you know, whole career was in hospitals almost, but um, along with that, I have periodically, you know, visited people in the hospital and always check out the gift shop I find them um, you know they're they're just really nice inspirational uh, calming whatever right it, the gift shop is always an interesting place to browse uh, when I was working in hospitals though it, the biggest thing was I, that's where you went and got candy right you get a candy bar um, Okay, here's my point. They're run by the volunteers of the hospital 90% of the time. It's not a commercial venture and everything is volunteer and, and sometimes I think the volunteers um, do fundraisings. I mean, they, they get maybe get some of the money. Um, the, the people who work are volunteering, but the, the shop will raise some money for some other kind of fundraising event that the um, auxiliary, you know, the hospital auxiliary will put on. These are always 
retired people. And, um, I mean, who, who better to provide, um, knitting kits or something <laughs> in a hospital gift shop than people who knit? They just, they've never thought of it because it's too much of a niche thing, right? It's a tiny, they think, but wouldn't that be cool? Now, I would have, in order to start this, I would have to join a hospital auxiliary and volunteer my time <laughs> and uh, be the one to say, hey, let's put this in inventory. Or... I don't know who does the buying for that. You know, make up the knitting kits and take it to the hospital and say, hey, are you interested in putting something like this in your gift shop? That's my angle. That, that's the way I would probably have to do it. Because I don't really have the time to... Oops. What am I doing here? I really got going wrong here. Okay. I see. I have my needle, or my yarn wrapped around the needle twice. That was weird. It's beginning to come together over the thumb, but oh man, I got ladders so bad. How about I move these two stitches to the other needle? Then unfortunately the laddering is going to be on the front. This is, uh, I don't like this. This is a problem. with a I guess with the magic loop maybe it would be better with the magic loop stitches around now I lose track of what I'm doing here. Thank you, all crafty. I will catch you on the other side whenever. Take care of yourself. Have a good week. These are going to be fraternal twins anyway because 
if I continue to, I don't have the same color progression to make the second one. Oops. Nope, nope, nope. This is supposed to, I keep purling that. This is supposed to be a knit. It's all knit on this needle. All knit. All right, I have to decide whether to go to the knit pearl final four rows or oh, I I think I can. Of course, it stretches quite a bit. It's time for a cable anyway. Let's do the cable.
gonna do let's see at least two rows Let's do I know it looks really big, but I think it's gonna be fine. Three rows of get one per get one pearl one.
one more row and then cast off. Actually, I, I have, it looks like I have quite a bit of the <coughs> brown white left here. three rows on the cast on end not going to see the cast on in because of the fur cuff. Yep. Not bad. I'll cast it off. That's that's about the way the other one hits me. Even though they look totally different. <laughs> Fingerless mitts, they look totally different. I mean, you can see uh, I'm copying this pattern right here. This is a commercial one that I've worn off. I've, you know, I've just worn and worn, and it looks tacky. It doesn't look really good. So I'm copying it with some hand spun, and I took the um, fur off. I'm going to put the fur down here. So I'm ready to cast this one off. And the the they're not going to match because you can see that this um, hand spun is going to continue on to a different color. So. They're not going to match, but I have to do the thumb. That's a good point. Um, I was wondering why I still have some of this uh, purple brown left, but that's good. I can do the thumb in that. So cast it off, and then I'll do the thumb. How are you, Knots and Stitches? Good to see you. Um, I'm just about done. I'm going to be um, signing off here pretty soon. Go ahead and cast this off.
Your handspun mittens don't match either. <laughs> it's a thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This is because I used, you know, a multicolored um, braid of fiber, and I'm not making. I'm making small things. I'm not making a big thing out of it. When I finish the mittens, I'm going to take the uh, other skein that I made out of it. Here. Can you uh, go to a Ravelry link if I post it? Because I'll, you can see the two contrasting. It's really cool. Oh, wait. So the dyed part is targy. And... I had spun all the targi up and it was a single and I needed to ply it so I applied half of it with a white merino and half of it with a black merino. This is the white merino. The black merino mutes the colors, of course, but it's it's really a yin-yang contrast. It's really cool. Um, and that in that picture you can see it on Ravelry. So I haven't done anything with the black yet, and I am thinking about, after I make these mittens with this, I'll ha I should have a little bit left making a cowl that uses um, a little bit of contrast with this white as like a, a contrast band in it or something. I made almost all of this in stream. There was about eight rows on the start of it. And I did the rest in the stream. Oh no! How did that happen? Oh, for Pete's sakes, I missed a. Well, I may just sew that in. I think I picked up a loop. I did. I just picked up a loop. Oh, good. I thought I dropped a stitch.
so yeah the this is just a little the cast off is just a little tight so, boy they they are just like almost perfect this is a little loose but No, no, it's, um, we, because Valentine's Day is such a, uh, favorite, everybody wants to go out to eat, we don't. <laughs> we went out, um, Friday, I think it was Friday, we went to Red Lobster, that was my Valentine's dinner, so, we are just staying home, actually, you know, it's really gorgeous weather, and um, for the first time in a long time, we can go out and sit on the porch and enjoy it, and so that's what's in the plans. I am going to go out, um, after I get a, a bite of lunch, I'm going to go out and work on one fleece that needs picked open so that I can drum card it, and I'm going to do that out in the sunshine, and then after that, Hubby and I probably will just have a nice evening on the porch, or afternoon and evening, enjoying the weather. So everybody else, I totally forgot to say Happy Valentine's Day. I apologize at the beginning, I didn't even think about it. I knew it, I just didn't even think about it. So now... Let me wish you all a happy Valentine's Day. I hope that you all have something fun with the people that are important in your life, right? I'll be back Thursday evening, and I will be uh, spinning. And I have some really, really pretty Romney top to spin. So, we'll see you then. Thanks for hanging around. Good luck to everybody that is going out and about today and whatever you have to do, enjoy. Happy spinning, y'all. See you later. Bye.